All right, so let's take a look at some of the uh, new mesh fusion strip topology options uh, that we weren't able to look at in earlier alphas because they weren't fully uh, functional. And specifically, they relate to these uh, strip skirts, uh, so-called strip skirts, uh, with these uh, skirt rows and skirt outer rows. And uh, you'll notice that right now, uh, those are both set to zero. And that, that's important in the sense that really what much of what the new topology is about is supporting uh, post what I call post fusion modeling either uh, via procedural modeling where you use the uh, fusion item as a merge meshes source or uh, direct modeling performed on the uh, output fusion mesh. If you're doing just straightforward uh, mesh fusion modeling and, uh, and your strips are relatively narrow, we'll get to the details of that in a moment here, uh, you can actually get by without using these uh, skirt rows uh, and the skirt feature at, uh, at all. Um, I, I would suggest that uh, still, even, even if you're not taking advantage of the, uh, the skirt rows or don't need them, uh, it's still best to take advantage of the new topology, primarily because it just gives much better resolution, uh, cleaner topology, uh, sp specifically in uh, strip corners like we see here where three strips meet. There is an option here to turn uh, on the older uh, strip mode, um, but again, uh, unless you have a very specific reason, like you want to exactly preserve the state of a, of a, a previous model, uh, I would suggest not turning this legacy option on. You'll get uh, better uh, looking meshes with the new topology. However, as mentioned, um, that notion of not using skirt rows only holds up really if you uh, if your strips are relatively narrow. I'm going to select all the strips here. This model has strip items, so I'm using this fusion strips popover to uh, to select all the strips, and I'm going to go ahead and increase the width here to 50 millimeters. And you see we have uh, a problem with self intersection uh, at some of these uh, strip corners, and that's creating problems with the fusion mesh and uh, the, the, the reason that relates to uh, skirt rows and uh, outer rows is because without them, uh, corner rounding has uh, no effect on the strips. In other words, this basic strip topology that we see here with just this grid style uh, topology for the strips does not respond to corner rounding, which is, is generally speaking what is used to uh, prevent this sort of uh, self-intersection at strip corners. So if we go back to the fusion item here and uh, add a uh, skirt row, you'll see that the problem resolves. And that is because, selecting all strips again, uh, I have applied a, a small amount of corner rounding, which can be done easily with these little green squares here. There's a little bit more a little bit more, but really we just need a minimum value to resolve uh, any self-intersection uh, issues on the strip corners. So again, uh, best practices there when doing just straightforward fusion modeling where you don't plan on any procedural or direct post-fusion modeling, I would say it's probably just a good idea to go ahead and have the uh, one additional uh, skirt row here and um, its width really doesn't matter that much. It just needs to be there so that the uh, corner rounding can, can take effect. You can see I have it set fairly narrow here, five millimeters as compared to the overall width of the strip of 50 millimeters. Naturally, there are uses for these uh, additional strip properties and uh, they come into play when uh, we further manipulate the fusion model either through procedural or direct modeling. And uh, probably the best way to look at that is to simply look at an example. All right, so what we're looking at here is uh, a fusion model uh, that has been fed into a procedural. Actually, what we're looking at right now is the procedural mesh based on this fusion item. And you can see it has this uh, raised strip effect including uh, 
rounding at the corners, and this really nice crisp uh, edge of the uh, raised strip. And the entire mesh has been uh, converted into Catmull Clark uh, polygons uh, as part of the, uh, the mesh ops for this procedural mesh. And you know, to, to get to this state um, requires and makes good use of these new uh, strip skirt properties. Um, I won't go into detail uh, in this video uh, regarding the uh, sort of standard steps used to feed a uh, fusion item into a procedural as a merge mesh's source. Uh, that's covered in other videos, but just so uh, we all understand what's going on here, uh, that's what it is. We have a, a procedural mesh here, and that's what we're looking at is the procedural. Whoops, wrong file. That's what we're looking at here is the procedural mesh. And um, the, uh, it has a merge mesh source with the fusion item. Um, the vertex merge is required because uh, the parts of the uh, fusion output fusion item need to be welded together before we can further operate on it. There is a uh, push operator here that is, in this case, pushing the uh, surfaces other than the strips outward. That's based on a, on a selection of the a polygon tag selection of the uh, strips that's been inverted. And the, finally, there's a set polygon type, which is turning the result into a Catmull Clark mesh. And, uh, but really, most of what we're concerned about is this push operator, which is uh, what is benefiting from the new strip topology. So let's take a look at how that strip topology is uh, configured in this model. So I'm going to hide the procedural mesh here and uh, show the fusion item which is, the, again, the source of the procedural. And you can see we've got some stuff going on with the uh, strip rows here. We have a total uh, number of uh, strip rows that starts with three for the ordinary strip rows plus five of these skirt rows. And the way that these uh, row counts work is that uh, this first number indicates the number of the total number of skirt rows and the second number indicates how many of those five, in this case, are considered to be outer rows. And the special thing about outer rows is that they run parallel to one another uh, at a constant width, or a very nearly constant width. You'll see this tiny bit of variation of the width. So, for example, if I were to uh, get rid of those outer rows and just let everything be a normal uh, skirt row, you can see that uh, the width uh, tends to increase and the shape of the row acquires this little corner. It's not a smooth curve like it is at the outermost uh, areas of the strip. So again, these outer rows give us a uh, nice parallel, smoothly rounded uh, strip topology. Beyond that, looking at the uh, more basic control of these strip properties, once you have strip items, like we do with this fusion item, most of the uh, properties are adjusted in the fusion strip properties tab. Uh, the, the only ones that are controlled uh, globally in the fusion item are the number of uh, skirt rows and skirt outer rows. Uh, beyond that, again, we go to the strips themselves to control things such as the uh, overall skirt width and the skirt outer width on either side. They're controlled independently on either side of the strips. Um, and the uh, important to note that the, again, similar to the rows, uh, the skirt width is the overall width and the outer width is the part of that width that is uh, dedicated to uh, the outer rows. So in this case, the overall skirt width is 25 millimeters and 10 millimeters of that are uh, devoted to the uh, outer uh, rows. So perhaps for clarity we can go back to the uh, looking at the fusion item without the procedurals applied and see that we could, for example, um, take these two um, outer rows and make them a much larger portion of the overall skirt width. All right, well, more on all of this uh, going forward, and uh, probably best to show uh, the possibilities of uh, what can be accomplished 
uh, by taking advantage of these of this new strip topology will come in the form of uh, sample models and scenes and uh, look forward to uh, tossing some of those your way uh, in the coming weeks. All right, thanks. <laughs>